Now we come to Matthew 7, in which we are told to judge righteous judgment. Now we take this chapter and verses in the light of the fact that down the years the hypocrites in religion, the nominal Christians mostly, have used Matthew 7, the first couple of verses, All right. In fact, the first five verses to condemn righteous judgment. To condemn the word of God itself. Because the word of God <clears throat> has within it the teaching that we should judge. And not only Christians should judge, but all persons upon earth should judge and do judge. And the hypocrite judges. So the hypocrite is a hypocrite. Because a the hypocrite will go out and he will judge whether or not something is fit to eat, if their car is fit to drive, if they are fit to go out, if what another does is right or wrong, yet when they focus upon us, it's different. We, we, the kings of the earth, as it were, sorry, the kings of heaven, we should not judge. We're kings and princes unto God and priests unto God. We reign with one man, the man Christ Jesus, via justification by faith. Nominal Christianity denies even that. It will say, oh no, it's future. No, that's popish. Justification by faith makes us to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. As simple as that, even as the Apostle Paul rightly points out. In Romans 5.17, For if by one man's offence death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. So we reign in this life over condemning sin. So we cannot fall from grace and indeed grace has no efficacious quality. It is simply <clears throat> unmerited favour unmerited favour which cannot be taken back because God does not repent he is not given to repentance he is in one mind one will and one decree now in Matthew 7 we read judge not that ye be not judged alright that's the hinge pin, you see, <clears throat> the linchpin for all these false professors. Because they say we should not judge because it is written here, judge not that ye be not judged. Of course, what they're trying to cover up is the fact that they are false brethren. They do not want Christians to judge, to examine, to inspect all things. And to show the other party up for what it is. Verse 2. For which. Sorry for with what judgment ye judge. Ye shall be judged. And with what 
measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you again. Which is quite correct. We are not <clears throat> to judge unrighteously, but righteously. And if we judge according to the fleshly mind, hmm, our opinion, this opinion, that opinion, every other opinion that changes with the wind of change, right, okay, so we shall be condemned of ourselves. As straight as that. There's nothing about it. There's no two ways about it. We shall be judged. And it will come back upon our own heads because it will be unrighteous judgment. Judgment should be by facts, not opinions. The world is full of opinionated people. We've got this opinion one day, got a contrary opinion the next day. Double-minded persons. There are very few that know the truth, stand by the truth, exercise the truth, defend the truth, rather than opinions. Christ continues, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Hmm? That's... The quality of hypocrites. Eh? Oh, you do this, you do that, you do the other. Yeah, well, why don't you put your own life in order? Eh? They never focus upon their own life. To put that in order. To remove the beam Do as I say, do not do as I do, is their commentary. Christ continues, Or oh, how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out thy, the moat out of thine eye, and beholdest a beam is in thine own eye? You see, how can you? How can you pull hmm, the moat out of your brother's eye? If you've got a beam in yours, you can't see to do it. You don't know it's in your own eye. You don't know you're a hypocrite. You don't realise you're a hypocrite. And this is why you're a hypocrite. Clean up your own life. Put it in order. Be a decent, understanding, caring, charitable person. Lowly. Before the hand of God. Under the hand of God. Then you shall see clearly... Then, and only then, shall we see clearly. Verse 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. You see? Out of thine own eye. Cast it out. Cast it out. Deal with it. Speak to it. Cast it out. Have done with it. If you can see, and if you're a regenerate, then you will see. Or should be able to see if you've exercised yourself in the faith and continue to exercise yourself in the faith, you should see it. You shouldn't be blind to it. The part of growing up from a babe up to a mature Christian is to deal with oneself first and foremost before one deals with the world. We have to deal with the world every day. But before we begin to look at the world to correct the world, we should correct ourselves first of all. Gradually, gradually, gradually. That doesn't mean to say that when we see wrong, we don't declare against it. That's fine. That's what we should do. We are the light of the world. We are the truth of the world. Under the supreme light and the supreme truth. As we have the chief shepherd, so we have under shepherds. We should grow in grace and in knowledge of the truth and by experience and fiery trials that come to test the metal and to do away with the wood 
hay and stubble. As Christ sits there as the refiner of silver, the silver that we are, we are, we are not base metals, we are silver. He tries the silver until it is purified continually, until he sees his face in it, and then that's that. That's it. Welcome home. So we are to cast out the beam out of our own eye. To cast it out, not to rest with it. This is where the hypocrites in religion fail again. You see, they say, do, do not judge, because it says it's here. Well, you're just reading the plain, dead letter of the word of God. And by the way, you always exclaim that you have a secondary baptism of the Holy Spirit. So why isn't the Holy Spirit telling you that you're reading this as a dead letter? Why? When we that profess that we do not own a baptism of the Holy Ghost, that the Spirit of God comes in us in regeneration and casts out the ungodly spirit that you lot, you hypocrites, don't see because you've still got this beam and moat in your own eye. All right, so you judge everybody as being blessed of God. That God loves everyone. You need to be right with God. You need to cast the moat out of your own eye, but you can't. Basically because you have become hardened in your ways. You do not see that nominal Christianity is the broad road of religion down into the depths of hell. Multitudes, multitudes on that road. And you can't see it. And you despise and hate us for speaking truth. Because the truth is not in you. You need to cast out the moat. And the beam. And everything else out of your life. But you cannot. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You cannot hear and you cannot see. And in... The majority of cases that is so because it is the decree of God that it too is to be so that you might perish in your sins. That you should not be healed. It's as Paul says about hypocrites in Romans I believe it's true. Romans 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou judgest doest the same things, you see? Hmm? That's to the hypocrites, the Pharisees. Hmm? Those who think themselves, oh, I'm perfect. Then when you approach them and say, oh, you think yourself are perfect. No, I don't. As he wrings his hands, I'm ever so humble. Oh, no. But in his heart, he thinks himself as being perfect. He pays lip, lip service to us. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He belongs to the kingdom of the devil. And as the kingdom of the devil stands opposite to the kingdom of God, of which we are in the kingdom of God, being the children of God, the children of light, the children justified freely by divine faith, not human faith, because there's no such thing as human faith, but divine faith. As we're all born in unbelief, how the heck do we get faith if we're born in unbelief? And born in sin and iniquity we're shaping in. How do we get rid of all that? By human decisions? Not on your Nelly. Eh? We cannot do a divine act. Being that we are dead to a divine world. 
come back to that in a sec. 